Hi everyone, this is Heather from WeddingsByHeather.com. If you need help with your workflow or organizing your photographs, please visit my website for my free video series. I wanted to quickly show you guys how I would edit this photograph in Lightroom. I've left my settings on the upper left so that you can see what lens I use, a 70 to 200 at 2.8. Remember, at any time, you can press I on your keyboard to toggle that information. So I'm going to leave that there. I want to start in the basic panel, but before I do, I want you to notice something. I have all of my panels expanded, and when I do, I have to scroll down to find them. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend waste the rest of my life scrolling to get through panels. <laughs> it's such a waste of time to me. So one of the things I like to do is have all of these collapse. So all I did was right click and that's control click if you're using a Mac and choose collapse all. And the next thing I'd like to do is change that into solo mode. So what that means is that I can only have one panel open at a time, which is really handy. Also, just as a note, if you ever lose a panel, you can always right click and make sure that they are all turned on with a little check mark. For instance, if I click tone curve, it just disappeared and I can see that right here so I can, I can place that back in my panels. Okay, now I want to be able to access these panels quickly and with keyboard shortcuts, not with my mouse and the scrolling. So the way you do that is on the Mac, you hold down command and on the PC, it's control and command or control one will show you your basic panel command or control two will show you your tone curve command or control three will be the HSL sliders and so on. But what's really so three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. But what's really neat is that it collapses the other ones. So that's what solo mode is. When one panel is open, the other ones automatically collapse. And I really enjoy that. So I'm going to press command or control one to bring that basic panel back up. Also, I've left the histogram hidden in this particular tutorial. That is command or control zero that will show or hide the histogram if you like to work with the histogram while editing your photographs. Okay, so the first thing I did to this photograph was I brought down the exposure a little bit because of the background. I recognize that they're in a shadow and I'm going to fix that in just a moment. I also want to warm this up just a little bit. I like these images to be warmer, especially in the fall. I'm going to pull up on my shadows and down on my highlights just to even out the tone a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of blacks into that photo. And now that I like what I've done with the basic panel, I want to navigate to the split toning panel and that is command or control four on the keyboard. And I want to add a certain tone to this image. So I just played around a lot and I determined that I really like to add some hue into the shadows. And a number that I like is 39. Okay, why? It has this certain warmth to the photo that I enjoy. If you are not sure what kind of tonality you would like to add to the photo, there's this really neat shortcut in Lightroom. If you hold down Alt or Option while pulling on the hue, it will temporarily put the saturation to 100. It doesn't move the slider, but what it's doing is it's showing you that if that's the number that you chose, that's the color you would get if it were fully saturated, which obviously we're not going to do. So I determined that around anywhere between 35 and 40, there's kind of this like warm, it's almost like a sepia tone, uh, you know, this warm kind of yellow color orange to it. Okay, whatever. So I leave it around 30 or 49. And then for me, my saturation is anywhere between five and 10. And if you're not sure what that looks like, you can simply toggle this off and then on. It is so subtle. Um, I'm going to turn it up so you can really see it, but I really enjoy that color on photos like this. So there it is off and there it is on. Okay. That's too much saturation, but I prefer this tone over pulling up on the warmth. If you continue to pull up on the warmth too much in the basic panel, then the photo st starts to look too yellow. So I don't like that. Okay. I'm going to pull this back down. Okay, there's two more things that I want to do to this photograph. I want to add a vignette and I want to add some light 
on them because I was using my 70 to 200 and I was photographing alone. I didn't have a reflector. I wasn't using a fill flash. So I knew that I had enough light to add that in Lightroom. I'm going to press command or control one to get back to my basic panel. And now I'm going to press, I just like to see that basic panel. I didn't I actually did not have to do that, but I just like to see where I'm at. I'm going to press K on my keyboard in order to get my adjustment brush tool. And I'm going to choose a preset um, Weddings by Heather Add Light. But essentially all it is, is I've pulled up on the exposure and up on the shadows. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make sure that auto mask is turned off. I don't want to constrain those adjustments. So that's A on the keyboard. And I'm going to pull that flow down to 50 instead of 100 because I'd like to build up this effect. And all I have to do is press five on my keyboard in order for that to happen. Okay, so my brush is nice and big. So I'm just going to click and drag over them. And when I have it the way I'd like, I could look at my before and after. Remember, that's my backslash key before and after. And if that's not enough light, you could come over here and drag up. Okay, please be careful. You do not want to get the halo effect on these images where you can see that you've brushed on light. You want it to look more natural. So I'm not going to take it too far, but just enough. Incidentally, in this photo, I think I would like to warm them up a little bit because they were in the shadow. They're a little bit cooler in terms of temperature than the rest of the photo. So I'm just going to pull on up on their temperature just a little bit. Okay, I'd like to add a vignette to this photo. And let me say this, before adding a vignette, I'm going to press K to drop that tool. And I'm going to come down into the vignette panel. And that is going to be Command or Control 7 on your keyboard. And so I could come in and add the vignette, you know, and change the midpoint. I don't like it being so symmetrical. I actually want to make it a little, I don't know, I guess I, I just want to burn in certain areas of the photograph. So I don't necessarily want, you know, a, a straight vignette. So I'm going to double click that back to zero. Whenever you have a slider in Lightroom, if you double click the slider, um, indicator, it will go back to zero where it was. So I'm going to go ahead and press K on my keyboard in order to get my adjustment brush back. I'm going to add a new pin or node. And this time I'm going to pull down on the exposure a little bit and down on the shadows. I'm going to leave my auto mask off and my flow at 50. And now I can just sort of burn in these areas that I want to be a little bit darker, but not necessarily you know, a, a vignette that's the same on all sides. And you can't really see that much happened there, but that's okay because this is interactive. I can come in and pull down on that and I can also pull down on the shadows a little bit. I'm gonna press K to drop that tool and I'm gonna look at my overall before and after. And I'm really happy with the direction of this photo, except I do notice now that I did that burning, I feel like the light that I put on them is too much. That's okay, I press K on my keyboard I see that node or pin is right here. I can click it two ways. I can adjust this. I can come over to my panel and simply pull down on the exposure and or the shadows. Or what I can do is just hover over this pin and click and drag to the left and it will lessen the effect. That looks pretty good. K on the keyboard to collapse or drop that tool. Backslash key to look at my overall before and after. And I think that looks great. I'll see you in the next video.